Scooby-Doo, Looney Tunes, Cartoon Universe Adventure. Do I have your fucking attention? This is real. It exists. A Scooby-Doo Looney Tunes crossover game. Not only that, you can get it on Steam. And on some Nintendo console, no one remembers. They had like two screens or some shit. So who do you play in this game? Do you play Scooby? Do you play Bugs Bunny? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever played Sonic Forces? Yeah. You play as your own original Looney Tune Do Not Steal. Why do you only get four species? What if I want to be a Marmoset? Hey, there's a yellow cat. My girl Dixie is a yellow cat. Okay, that's closer than what I thought I would get. Fucking great value, Dixie. Okay, here's the deal. This game has four levels, and each level has four stages. So that's 16 stages in all in this whole game. And only four of them are Scooby-Doo. And I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. The Looney Tunes and Scooby-Doo do not interact in any way. Did I mention that this game is $20? There is a story to this game, but it's kind of hard to follow because apparently this game originally had animated cutscenes and they took them out on the 3DS and Steam versions. And only the iPhone version of this game has animated cutscenes, which is no longer on the App Store and is lost to time. So the mobile version of this game is the superior one. Let let that sink in. Be honest, that sound just made you take your headphones off and look around. This is my birthday party, bucko. Actually, Daffy, today is my birthday. We have the same birthday? Oh, this is based on the Looney Tunes show, isn't it? I could tell by how stupid they made Daffy and how bad the humor is. I could go on one hell of a rant about this show, but I ain't gonna. And then it just throws you into the game. No tutorial, no explanation, nothing. Just an arrow. Aren't those game designers wonderful? I think everybody wants their OC in a video game. Too bad it had to be this one. So it looks like we've got an isometric platformer. We've got enemies. We've got coins. We've got enemies. We've got coins. Is that all that's in this game? Actually, you don't even have to collect the coins. All you have to do is get to the goal. She dance, and it kicks you right into the next one. You do get weapons after a while like this anvil that will not hit shit. You don't even need the weapons anyway because your basic attack already kills in one hit. This game for the most part is babby game easy. Even the parts where you're chased by Paul Blart Mall Cop himself. Grab him and bag him. Dixie, you just murdered a person. Oh, there he is. He's fine. And he wants a hug. Damn it, I'm jealous. I want to hug my OC. The most challenge you get is the boss battles, which actually are kind of challenging, but not really. Like once you learn the pattern, you're good. The only ones that are different are the Scooby-Doo theme levels, and the boss battles in them are puzzles that are basically spelled out for you. That's about all I've got to say about this game, other than, would you believe that WayForward developed this game? Yes, they developed a butchered port of a mobile game. That is one big pile of shit. Speaking of a big pile of shit, welcome to Working Man Games. I'm Stuart K. Riley. This channel is all about suffering. In this case, suffering succotash. I'm funny! Guys, there are so many Looney Tunes games, my god. You search them up on Vim's Lair, think you found them all, and, but no, search Bugs Bunny, search Porky Pig, search Sylvester, search Daffy Duck. There's more. Speedy from Gunk Gonzalez has got his own games. In fact, there's more games than I can cover in one video. So I decided to stop at 16-bit, and I'm leaving out the obvious ones, mostly because Mike Matei won't answer my emails. I just want to beat the shit out of Mike Matei. Is that too much to ask? I guess so, so no birthday blowout or crazy castle. But hey, we got Bugs Bunny on the MS-DOS. Guys, just so you know, this is what PC games used to look like in the 80s. This was back when PC gaming was a downgrade. Let's see how much crypto you mine with a couple of megahertz and no graphics card. So you're stuck in a castle and there's a bunch of floors, at least a hundred. And from what I can tell, you're supposed to get four keys and then find the exit. What I was never able to figure out is, are the keys in the same place every time or is it randomly generated? And Google turned up shit. I know this is a limitation of 80s DOS games, but I love how the whole castle is pink. I just imagine like it's a Barbie castle. Wouldn't that be a game, Barbie kidnaps Bugs Bunny? It is super easy to get lost. They give you this number that tells you what floor you're on, but it helps like none. 
They do give you items like ether that slows the enemies down, which is a callback to the episode this is based on. Remember when Bugs got high off ether fumes? More like drugs, Bunny. Ah, this is the second episode I've made drug jokes on. Luckily, there's no Bugs Bunny crack pipes. I, d <laughs> I did find this, though. How about Taz? Ah, that's horrifying. How about Taz on the Atari 2600? You see that yellow blotch of pixels? Plixel, pixel, pixel. That yellow blob of pixels is supposed to be Tasmanian Devil. You collect the food, don't touch the dynamite, and that's it. I love the fact that Atari spoon-fed us this shit of this is supposed to be Tasmanian Devil, and we're just supposed to believe that shit. Like, you could get rid of the title screen and just call it Texas Tornado, and it'd just be a twister. Hell, it could be about the movie twister, for all I care. Roadrunner on NES. Now, this was one of those black unlicensed cartridges that Tengen made. This one's based on an arcade game where you collect bird seed while scrolling left and avoiding Wily. I never could make it very far in this game because I kept getting stuck on the boundaries of the level. I know, I know, there's somebody out there that can play this game blindfolded with one hand tied behind their back and speed run it. Well, good for fucking you. You want a damn cookie? Anyway, this game isn't too offensive and it's a decent arcade port. But what about the MS-DOS version? Oh my god, my ears! Ah! Next, we've got two unreleased games for the Commodore 64. Bugs Bunny Private Eye and Daffy Duck the Great Paint Caper. They were apparently finished but never released. I can't get a clear answer on when they were made. I've heard 1984, 1993, 1990. If it came out in the 90s, I could understand why it wasn't released. Nobody was really using Commodores anymore. I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't figure out the Bugs Bunny game. I think it may not be finished, the copy that I have. Could we not make that noise? God, that's annoying. Woo, woo, woo. They put a shitload of enemies in this game. They're fucking everywhere. But luckily, you have a pretty big life bar, so it's not that big of a deal. I found what I think is a door, but I never could figure out how you're supposed to go in it. I feel bad because somebody in the comments will know how to get through that door, and it will probably be something really stupid and simple, and I'll look like a dumbass. Well, wouldn't be the first time. The Daffy Duck game seems to have a lot going on, though. There's a lot of talking to characters, fetching items, and solving puzzles. The controls are kind of weird, but Commodore 64 games only had one button and a joystick, just like an Atari. So that meant that most games had up to jump, and the button was your action button. Don't you love these enemies? A camera with legs and one of those director clapping things. You know what else is weird about the controls? You want to know how you enter a door? Well, up is jump, so it can't be up, right? You hold the button down, then press up. I guess when your controls are four directions and a button, you gotta make do with what you got. You notice I'm not really hating on this game all that much. Well, it doesn't bother me, honestly. I could see liking this game if I owned a Commodore. But if this did come out in the 90s, the Super Nintendo was already doing way better stuff than this. Hell, Wolfenstein 3D might have been made during the time this was made. So I guess if there's a bad thing to say about this game, it's giving me nothing to work with. It's not funny. And when Looney Tunes isn't funny, there's something wrong. Cheese Catastrophe. Oh, God. It's Speedy Gonzalez, and he's on the Sega Master System. Well, this game immediately looks wonderful. Oh, you can toss sombreros? Oh, except for when I actually need them to take out this scorpion. So the sombreros aren't infinite. It would have been nice to know that. How hard would it have been to put a sombrero counter? Oh, we uh, quit scrolling. Okay, game. What stupid mundane tasks do we have to do? Well, you got to go down in these holes and then save the kidnapped mice because only the brave can rescue the kidnapped mice. Okay, game, I saved the mouse. Now what? Oh, that is the end of the level. You just can't go there until you save the mice. I see. You know, game, if you were a woman, I'd piss on you and ask you to call me daddy. Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout on the NES will not be reviewed today. Looney Tunes on the Game Boy re-released on Game Boy Color. So I'm Daffy Duck and my weapon is a frisbee. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and immediately I'm fighting Yosemite Sam. Oh, shit, I already see a problem with this frisbee. Until it comes back to you, you don't have a weapon. Well, that was the fastest boss fight in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely changed my mind. This frisbee is no good. If you keep moving around, it can't get back to you. Just like how I avoid the police. Oh, water levels. You know, my doctor does not prescribe me enough Zoloft to put up with this shit. Ah, I see Looney Tunes' use of blackface didn't end with the show. This guy's actually a bitch to kill. He keeps moving all around and sending out these little fish to give you even less room to move around. Now we're Tweety trying to avoid Sylvester while someone's throwing 
throwing their garbage at us. Yeah, you know, I could be doing something better with my time than playing this stupid crap. You know how much I want to play Stalker right now? But no, I have to entertain you people. Well, you know what? Entertain yourselves. I'm going to go play Stalker. Oh, a nice, creepy, dark sewer with a bunch of ambient noise. Wow, I bet nothing out here is going to hurt me in any way, shape, or form. I'm sure there's no monsters or anything like that in here that's totally going to rape my... <laughs> Away from me! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Out of ammo, must use pistol bullets! The pistol does nothing! F fuck it, just run, just run, just fucking run! Ah. What have I got? Shotgun, shotgun, there we go. I got him! Yeah! What was I doing? Oh, Looney Tunes, right. When the garbage hits you, then you start going down and can't fly. And more than once, I've fallen straight into a manhole when that happened. Seems like I have the best luck in the world when it comes to people's holes. And I already hate the word holes because it rhymes with poles. And now we're Porky in an airplane doing a shoot 'em up And it's actually kind of fun. Okay, this needs the music. Let me get the music. Now we're Taz, and we got to get all the meat before the time runs out. You know, this game's got a lot of variety. I didn't expect a Looney Tunes game to go this hard. This is almost a decent game. But guys, you know this show. And if you don't, something always fucks up what could be a good game. And in this case, it's every single fucking level after this. Now we're Speedy Gonzalez, and what is this attack? Do they really expect you to hit an enemy with that? That's about as useless as tits on a boar hog. I've seen people draw tits on a boar. I don't know why, but they decided Speedy needed to be extremely floaty and uncontrollable. He runs like he's on ice, and any little bump knocks him all over the place. And because he's so slippery, it's so easy to overshoot where you're trying to go. And then there's this freaking puzzle where these blocks move around, you gotta try not to be crushed from them, and it seems to take forever! this. They put an enemy in this little bitty hole where you can't jump on him. What am I supposed to do? Ariba him to death? Ariba! I guess not. That's all you had to do? Well, off to hang myself. Guys, I'm scared. When I searched that video, this came up. I never thought that YouTube would be the one to reach out to me. I wonder if Frank still works there. Fuck, they even bought this number. Then there's this Roadrunner stage where I swear it's all a memory theme. You need to memorize the pattern of the rocks and the projectiles Wiley throws at you, or else you're gonna get hit more times than a guy who made a dead baby joke at a miscarriage help group. I mean, you can memorize it, yeah, but it takes a hundred tries to get it right, and you only get three lives to do it all in. So get good and get good right fucking now. The last stage has you playing Bugs Bunny. Holy shit! Yeah, apparently you gotta jump every time these spikes come up. I love how the spikes are all this one sprite with no transparency. Uh, the ghost killed me. That's nice. You have enough to worry about with the spikes. They throw ghosts on top of your ass. Oh, fuck off! They put that ceiling there so you'd get hit! I don't know what this room is, but apparently you can turn something on in it. Last part of the game is the big boss rush where you fight all the iconic Looney Tunes characters. Yosemite Sam, Boney the Dinosaur Bones, Bob the Mummy, Not the Singing Frog. I don't know who the fuck this is, but I remember Joey the Rock Throwing Gumball. And finally, Elmer Fudd, the final battle. And he is one tough son of a bitch. Here's something I found out. That that boss health meter is a lie. You would think every time you hit him, you take a hit point away. No, each one equals two hit points. So it's actually this. The best method I could come up with was to try to bounce on his head and stay there. Do not get in front of him or he'll ass fuck you with that spread gun. It took some pure D safe scumming, but I actually was able to beat him. And that is Looney Tunes on the Game Boy. Yeah, 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 I got games to play, man. Let's change it up a little bit. Tasmania on the Super Nintendo. Whoa, was this made by the same people that made Lotus Turbo Challenge? 
So I kept going forward and forward and forward, thinking I would get to an exit or a finish line or something. Then I found out there is no end. What you're supposed to do is collect these baby chicks. Also, you can apparently eat birds to replenish your health. You can smack into a tree in this game, and apparently, and it took me a while to figure this out, you're supposed to press up and down over and over until you straighten yourself back out. Man, we need more toony shit in video games. Anybody remember cell damage? So you find the baby chicks and eat the defenseless baby chicks. And that's the game! I do love that they added the birds leaving his stomach, though. So he didn't eat them, he just vored them. Trust me, I know vore experts. <laughs> Oh, hello, Windows default MIDI drum sound. You know when you play Duke Nukem 3D and the drum sounds like this. That's the same one. The only real enemies in the game are these cars on the road, and you have to dodge them, which can be hard to do when you're spinning. For some reason, you could still get hurt if you hit the back of a car that's going away from you. Anyway, that's the meat and taters of this game. It just makes you want to play Lotus or OutRun. Speedy Gonzalez on the Game Boy. Now, I had this as a kid, and I remember it very well. Now, let me ask y'all something. What kind of music do you think of when you think of Speedy Gonzalez? Do you think of something like this? Probably so, but I bet you don't think of Mozart. What a freaking odd choice of music for a Speedy Gonzalez game. Okay, boys, I want y'all to really analyze what's going on in this map. You got some hills that make you faster. You got these bridges. You got these waterfalls. And you've got this. And you also have this. Gee, I fucking wonder where they got their inspiration. This is the biggest ripoff of Jazz Jackrabbit I've ever seen. One thing you'll notice quickly is there aren't that many enemies in the game. Mostly what you'll be worried about is spikes and pitfalls. What enemies are here kill you in one hit, but they're not that much of a threat unless you touch them. Now, because this game is Sonic expired... Expired? Yes, it's a dead Sonic game. Because this is Sonic inspired, you'll be tempted to go fast in certain areas, which you may have to do to get past certain spots, but you better keep an eye where you're going because this game expired expects you to jump over shit while still going really fast. Overall, it's a pretty easy game. I remember it being hard as a kid. Maybe I just sucked. And you get unlimited continue, so the game gives you every opportunity to beat it. I thought I was really gonna tear into this game, but you know what? It's fine. There's also Aztec Adventure Speedy Gonzalez, which is a little bit better. There's a lot more running in this one than there is in the other one. There's also these parts where you've got a boat and the scrolling on this looks really nice. You also get weapons like the very traditional Mexican weapon, the boomerang. Wait, what? Why would Speedy have a boomerang? That's not Mexican. But then again, what is a traditional Mexican weapon? If you say knife, I'm gonna hurt you. Okay, I just Googled Speedy Gonzalez with a knife. I hate the internet. Here's a weird thing that happened. I'm fighting Sylvester, and his heart points again equal two hits each. But for some reason, after only taking two hearts away, he ran off. I was inching forward very slow expecting something to happen, but no, I won apparently. That was odd. Anyway, not a groundbreaking game, but not a bad game either. It gets a pass. Sylvester and Tweety and KG Capers on the Genesis. This is an interesting one. You're supposed to follow Tweety around the level until you reach the end. You're given binoculars to see where Tweety is, and Sylvester keeps saying this. Hello, breakfast. Hello, breakfast. Yes, I am 10 years old. Going up the stairs is funny too. Apparently the music changes when you go up them. You can hit Tweety by scratching him, but I don't know if that actually does anything other than give you points. Remember when people gave a shit about points? Me neither. I couldn't get past the second level, though, because I couldn't stop falling off of shit. So these power lines, apparently, depending on where you're standing, you can fall off of them if you stand there for too long. But there's other places on the lines where you don't fall off at all. Game can't make up its mind what the rules are. I must have played this shit for half an hour trying to figure out how I'm supposed to get to Tweety. And this game finally pissed me off to the point I couldn't take no more. One out of ten, and you only get that point because of Hello Breakfast. Okay, I'm gonna be 
honest. I've been nice so far, not giving these games a hard time, but this game, this game could go suck a gun barrel till it comes. Daffy Duck the Marvin Missions on Game Boy. Now this would be another simple ho-hum mediocre platformer, except for one thing. They give you a jetpack with limited energy and that's how you jump. Look at this shit. Now, I know it doesn't look all that horrible right now, but trust me. You immediately get into a mini boss fight with K9, and he runs around at Mach 11 speed aimlessly while you get fucked. But I'll show you who gets fucked. Watch this. <laughs> Oh, fuck this. Are you kidding me? Hey, what is that? Is that an item? Oh, fuck off. I thought you could touch it. Now, here's the first problem with the jetpack. It doesn't go far enough. So you need to be, like, right on the edge of the platform. Oh, no. It put me at the start of the level. I guess we're doing this shit again. Okay, I'm gonna try again and get right on the... Oh, oh, good grief. Wait, what if... Oh! That's stupid. So you're telling me you have to fall down, then do the jetpack. That's nice. Oh, you motherfucker. How do you expect me to get through there? Well, it took a few hundred tries, but I got it. Rocket Knight Adventures, this is not. But the next jump is even worse. <laughs> I did it! I did it! No! To whoever it was that came up with this jetpack shit, I hope their mother gets raped by an octopus. Oh, hey, I did it. Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage on the Super Nintendo. How many games have I done so far? Jeez. So it looks like you can kick, you can throw pies, and apparently enemies can block your attack. Come on. Come on, dude. Oh, there. Oh, good grief. Three dogs? You think that's enough enemies? Oh, come on, dude. Die. Here's Elmer Fudd, and apparently his gun has homing bullets, and they're kind of hard to see. The hit detection on Elmer's really screwed up. Sometimes you'll hit him, sometimes you won't. He can take a fuck ton of hits, too. I hit him so many times, I started wondering if that's what you were supposed to do. And then finally this happened. I win? The second level is where the game rips you a new wabbit hole. There are so many projectiles and pitfalls and crap everywhere. There's nowhere to rest and figure where you're supposed to go. You just go. And you keep having to make these leaps of faith that may end you up in a hole. Oh, for God's sakes, it's that shit where the projectiles go as fast as you. Ugh. When I finally get to the boss of the level, I can't figure out how to hit him. I see a target on the floor, but I have no idea what you're supposed to do with it. And a bunch of homing bullets kick my ass. Look at this. Look at this, man. So much crap everywhere. Let's think back to the 90s for a minute. Can you imagine getting this game for Christmas? It's like, here you go. Here's your new game, honey. And you're like, yay, Bugs Bunny. Woohoo. And you play the game and it's like, oh, this this isn't good. This this is horrible. And your mom's all like, do you like your new game, honey? And you just had to go, uh, uh, yeah. It happened to me. Speedy Gonzalez and Los Gatos Benditos on the Super Nintendo. Bruh! They're not even hiding that this is Green Hill Zone. I mean, look at it. What else could it be? Emerald Hill Zone? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> now you're trolling me. No, no, no. This game ain't real. This ain't real. Wait, it is? Oh, no. Well, okay, it's Sonic with one little exception. You have to save all your friends. They're in these little cages. But from what I've heard, there's no secret ending or anything like that for getting all the mice. It's literally just for score. Now, even though this is a Sonic ripoff, would you believe me, guys, if I told you that it kind of works? It doesn't make me want to puke? And from what I've researched about this game, that's kind of the general consensus. This game was slow. 
slammed and given one-star reviews in the magazines, but everybody who actually owned the game actually liked it. For every bad review I find of this game, I find five good ones. So maybe you might want to give this one a try? I didn't hate it. It's not the best game in the world, but I didn't hate it. I did think the game over screen was pretty fucked up, especially when you say no. Damn, dude. That's fucking dark. At least it's not that Felix the Cat game over. Oh, shit. Total whiplash. Hello. And we're going back to Game Boy with Tasmania on the uh, Mattel Aquarius. Of course the fucking Game Boy. Oh, my God. That face is the definition of colon three. Oh, God. Oh, that is so cute. You know what they did? They made part of the screen flash so it would represent water. That is adorable. Okay, first problem. When Taz starts spinning, you can't stop stop him. You have to wait on him to stop on his own. That's kind of shit. You know, it's not really blowing me away, but I can't find anything wrong with it either. It feels like a decent platformer. It just feels dated, you know, like what you would expect a Game Boy game to be. And then this level happened, where you get thrown in the water with no explanation of what you're supposed to do. Turns out you're supposed to press the spin button repeatedly to stay on top of the water. Look, everybody, he's walking on water. Jesus Cristo! It's pretty solid overall. I've got nothing against it. Let's move on to some grade-A trash called Taz Munching Madness. Let me tell you something. If Ron White reviewed video games, he'd say, Games that make you go Because as soon as the gameplay started, I knew knew I was gonna hate this game and made a loud, annoyed grunt. Ugh. I mean, look at it. You can almost smell how cheap it is. So what are you supposed to do in this game? Guys, I have no fucking clue. And that music gets annoying really quick, too. As you can see, there's arrows in the map, but when I go where it's telling me to go, I don't find anything, or I find a dead end. I don't know if this game knows what you're supposed to do. The closest thing I got to progress is I found a character that wanted me to race him, and I tried to race him. Look at this. I tried to race him, and then died during the race, and I never could figure out how to get back over there, even with the fucking arrows. Negative 30 out of 10. This sucked ass. I had the same problem with another Taz game called Escape from Mars. I was actually stuck at my starting point for a little while trying to figure out where to go. Then by sheer accident, I figured out what you're supposed to do. You can apparently wall jump with the spin attack. Which I'm not gonna lie is pretty cool. Until I got stuck in this one place that seemed to only have one way in and out. And I could not for the life of me get the wall jump to work. So I was just stuck. Again, somebody in the comments will tell me, Stu, you dumb fuck, you're supposed to do this, this, and this. Listen, if I'm having to ask people how to play or get a fucking walkthrough off YouTube for the first fucking level, that's a bad game. So eat my whole ass. And there's a lot of it. I'm f I'm fat. Uh, Roadrunner and Coyote's Desert Demolition on the Genesis. Okay, this is so cute. Instead of having music in the game, there's musical cues for everything that you do. You get all these crazy Acme gadgets to try to help you get through the stage like these springs. Play the music. And for no reason, here's a dog cock rock. Really makes you think. Uh, this was another one of those games where I couldn't figure out where the hell I'm supposed to go. This is the second level, and I can't figure out where to go. Why did games have to be so damn cryptic back then? You know, I say that, but Super Mario World and Yoshi's Island didn't have you wandering around clueless as a motherfucker. You know what it could be? Just bad game developers. I looked up the people that developed this Blue Sky Software. They were a subsidiary of Titus. You know what Titus made? Superman 64. 
4. That horrible Taz game was M4 Limited, the people that made that Resident Evil Game Boy game. You know what they did before that? They made Windows 95 screensavers! Now then, this company called Sunsoft had the exclusive publishing rights to all the Looney Tunes games on Game Boy and Super Nintendo, and Sunsoft would always hire the lowest freaking bidders to make their games, though sometimes they would make them in-house, and then Acclaim would publish it. As was the case for Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday, but did Sunsoft working on it make it any better? Actually, guys, this game's kind of impressive. Basically, the premise is Porky Pig is stuck inside a nightmare, and they sure go out of their way to make sure it's a scary nightmare. The music is actually really fucking creepy, man. It's like, damn, calm down, it's just a Porky Pig game. I really admire the graphics in this part of the level. It reminds me of Mickey Mania. Hey, watch this, I'm gonna cheese it. Yeah, speed run, boys. The second level's got some weird music, too. You hear that weird lo-fi whistling noise? Makes it sound like unsettling. But how is the game, you ask? Stop talking about the music. How's the game? Well, it's a platformer with pretty decent controls. The game gives out hit points and one-ups like they're candy, so it's not too awful hard. Even a piss-poor gamer like myself can play it. Sometimes you get a boss battle that has a puzzle to solve, like to kill Yosemite Sam, you have to make his bullets hit this frying pan and knock back to him. And why is Yosemite Sam 10 feet tall? Don't question it. I talk to macro fetishes so much it doesn't even bother me anymore. Well, this game has to get ruined somehow, huh? Or I wouldn't be talking about it still. Well, you know what? It's got water levels, and they suck. They suck harder than a pent-up shop vac. Okay, so you have to get on these bubbles and use them as platforms, and it doesn't look like a problem now, but boy, does it turn into a problem later. Also, you would think you'd be able to get on this little stick right here, but no, it's just for decoration. Come on, music! I was praising you! It's like the sound my guitar makes when I leave the amplifier on. They managed to make this level the most cryptic fucking maze, I swear. It's perfectly possible to circle around and go right back to your starting point accidentally. Running around in circles trying to figure out where to go. And the whole time, this fucking noise is looping over and over. Did you know that scientists found out that certain sound frequencies can trigger a man's urge to kill? It's like the brown note, but people die. That's your review. If you play Porky Pig, you'll go on a murder spree. If this bubble section doesn't cause you to burn your whole damn house down. Okay, let me explain this bullshit. You have two things here that make bubbles you use as platforms. What you're supposed to do is set them off as close to the same time as possible. If you don't get the bubbles close together, you can't jump back and forth from them easily. And these ceilings are spaced to where you have to do this just right. If you're too slow, you fucked up. Okay, there we go. Now here's the bu- oh, damn it! Now, okay, now give me what- no, give me the bubble. Give me the bubble. No, give me the other bubble. Then the other one. What? Why? These things decide to give you the bubble when they want to. Okay, man, we got the bubbles. Now, don't fuck this up. Do not fuck this up. Okay. Damn it! All right, give me the bubbles. We'll do this again. We'll get... What? Oh! You have to be in that, like, precise spot before you can get on the bubble. What the fuck, man? Oh, I finally did it. And there's a checkpoint. Thank God. Oh no. I guess it was such a good fucking puzzle, we have to do it again. No, You piece of shit! Who was the bastard who thought this was a good idea for a puzzle? I hope somebody ties them to the back of a semi-truck and then runs them down the interstate. In fact, I hope it's a chicken truck so they smell chicken shit the whole time they're being drug across the road. And I hope their cat gets gonorrhea and then their wife catches it from the cat. And then he gets it from the dog. <sighs> okay, I've got it out of my system now. 
You know, I got a good mind to end the video right here, but I don't want to leave on a sour note like that. How about Daffy Duck in Hollywood on the Sega Genesis? Well, I can make that review pretty damn short because I never got past the first damn level. From what I can gather, you're supposed to collect these time bombs, but guys, I do not have the slightest clue where they are. And it makes me feel like a jackass too, because it could be just in plain fucking sight. The game doesn't seem to be all that bad, honestly. So I'm in this weird place where I don't know if I should give it a bad review or not, because what if the game's not bad? What if I'm bad? You know what I mean? So I'm going to have to give this question mark out of five. Daffy Duck the Marvin Missions on Super Nintendo. Hopefully this will be a lot better than the Game Boy one called this. Oh, you got a shop where you can buy weapons. What are you buying? I don't know what any of this fucking shit does, but I'm gonna buy it. That's how I buy crypto. Okay, first problem. The gun has knockback. That is annoying. Oh, oh, that, oh, oh, that is floaty. Floaty. See there, I'm scared to shoot my gun for all the damn knockback. Now we're fighting some of the Martians. Let's try out the electric gun. Dude, electric gun sucks, man. Who the fuck is this? The Monopoly guy? That noise is hysterical. The spread gun seems pretty badass. I gotta admire just how many weapons you have to choose from. And apparently you can even buy one-ups. The levels in this one do feel like they're mazes, but it doesn't feel cryptic. It's more like it was made to be that way. As if the game wants you to explore. They do give you a map, which is nice, but I need a damn magnifying glass to look at it. I was pretty close to saying that I like this game, but then I came to this Marvin Martian boss fight that is fucking impossible. It wouldn't be so bad if he didn't have this fucking saw he was waving everywhere. Guys, I tried my damnedest, but I could not beat this bitch. So here again, another game that I can't get past the first level. It's just like marriage. It looks like it's gonna be good and then drills you a new asshole. That is my review. This game is like marriage. Looney Tunes back in action. Okay, look at this crusty image quality and listen to this horrible music and you tell me what console this is on. The Game Boy fucking Advance, right? Yep. And if you know your Game Boy Advance games that are licensed movie tie-ins, how much you want to bet? You know what? I'm not even going to joke. It's isometric. What was this fucking obsession with isometric games on the Game Boy Advance? Ew, this game makes me physically ill to look at. You want to know what this game is like? Well, I will tell you. Have you ever changed a litter box that is used by multiple cats? That feeling of having to take this little plastic shovel and dig up all this disgusting feline waste out of this poo-poo sand. You bag it all up and then you have to haul this bag of horrible smelling sinus burning feces and urine to the trash outside and when you finally get to that sink and get your hands all full of soap and cleaned off you let out a sigh of relief that it is finally over and you won't have to do this again for a while that is what playing this game is like what do you do in the game I don't fucking know. Foghorn said something about making money and grabbing monkeys or some shit like that. I don't know, man. I don't know. I was just so ready to quit playing this. Full litter box out of 10. <sighs> I've got one more game. That's right, we're almost done. And it's a good one. I remember seeing this game in Walmart, and I told my parents, Mom, Dad, if you buy this game for me, it will be the last game I ever buy. That's how I convinced them to buy it for me. Needless to say, it wasn't the last game I ever bought. But I gotta say, if it would have been, it would have been a good one to stop at. Looney Tunes Operation Carrots, also known as Carrot Crazy. It's such an unassuming game. You would never guess in a million years that a Game Boy Color Looney Tunes game would be decent. And that only two people worked on it. In fact, I have names. And I had to look up how to pronounce them. Let's see how I did. Fernando Valles and Guillaume Dubel. They specialized in handheld games, and this is the best one they ever made. The object of the game is you have to find four parts of a clapboard on a level. Yeah, I looked up what that thing is called. Luckily, they're pretty much hidden in plain sight, so you can just go front to back on a level. So there's a very small chance you'll have to backtrack. You can play as Lola in this game, and she's got an umbrella that lets you glide down slowly. Look, you get to play as Lola. That ought to be worth the cost of admission, right? Bugs, however, can tunnel under certain areas, and both of them can eat super carrots that allow them to fly. You see that carrot meter in the bottom right? Well, Bugs and Lola can float in the air for a little while after you jump, and when you feel 
that carrot meter up, you can do it longer. For the most part, you'll find the game pretty easy, honestly. It doesn't really get challenging until you get to the space level, which, by the way, has some banging music. You know what, I used to let this game idle just so I could listen to the music. If I had one complaint, the boss battles are all the same thing. It's just the game auto-scrolling and you dodging obstacles, and then hitting the boss with a hammer and dodging their projectiles. But if you know what, if that's the only problem I have with a Looney Tunes game, I think this might be the best one we've looked at so far. And that is where we're going to end the video. Guys, I believe this is my longest one yet, and I sure do certainly hope Hope that y'all like it. And you know, let me know, man. I'm small time. Every little comment, every like means something to me. I'm not a huge YouTuber. I don't plan to be, I don't try to be, and I don't sell myself as one. That's the whole reason it's called Working Man Games, because I'm just one of y'all. I just happen to have a good microphone and a bad accent. But that's our show for the day, but I'll go ahead and spoil it and tell y'all what the next one is. You know, I've been adding home computer games into the mix. And for me, that's uncharted territory, because I didn't grow up with those 80s computers like Commodore 64s and Amigas. So next episode, we're gonna dive our heads way deep into the bread box shaped bowels of the Commodore 64. I'm sure for many of you, you're gonna see a lot of games you ain't never seen before. And same here. Gonna be just like going to a foreign country. And boys, I got great news. We are so close to our $200 Patreon goal. And like I said, if we do hit it, I'll start doing two videos a month. You can join up for $5 or $1 damn dollar and you'll still get your name on the board which reminds me i need to show you that board and i need to get out of here see y'all later